what comes in the pack. I haven't read the manual yet. Based on my, I've used this product before. I used the smaller cans and they had two different kinds of nozzles. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, maybe. Well, anyway, I'll look closer. They're usually around pointed like this and then a flat, sort of an open fan spray. It comes with a wrench to attach everything. It comes with this silicone uh, to make sure the seal is tight around the gun. Put the silicone, silicone around that rubber seal to make it nice and tight. Don't use these gloves. These gloves are good for about five minutes. And then the moment you grab a stud, it puts a little hole in it, or you grab the ladder, it puts a hole. These just wear through very quickly and you're gonna get this stuff all over your hands. So use some cheap construction gloves. You'll see me suited up in a minute. Uh, I'm gonna wear a full outfit, head to toe, uh, vapor mask, not particle mask, vapor mask. I'll explain that later. And my shoes, everything, windows will be taped off. You see the blue foam in there? I'm gonna put that in the uh, rafters, in between the rafters at the top of the ceiling, just because it's an R10, takes up a good chunk of space. Those are two by eights up there. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm leaving the tanks outside right now to heat up. I've made it, well, I've made it. I've waited for the weather to be raining all the way up until now, and then raining hmm, this, later this afternoon to evening, so that we have a high humidity of about 80 to 90 percent. It's warm, it's about 23 degrees Celsius right now. The warmer the better. You don't want them so hot that they explode, obviously, uh, but humidity is huge and temperature is huge. This is glue, right? It's expanding glue that we call insulation. So if I got these on, I got that on these glasses, I'd be in a lot of trouble. Comes with a DVD. Uh, hi, 1990 called. They want their DVD player back. I'm not sure why they include that. Go online, watch the YouTube videos. I've got a safety data sheet, which will be unintelligible to me. Oh, yep. Uh, that's actually interesting. Headache, coughing, dizziness. That drives home just how serious this stuff is. It's so humid, the paper feels humid. That is awesome. Well, let me go back up in the attic, finish the, the styrofoam. Extruded poly, what is that called? Extruded, it's called something, extruded something. Two inches of that is an R10. So by getting an R10, one inch of this stuff is about an R6. So if I can get two inches on top of that foam, we're looking at 22, an R22. Each one of these is 45 pounds. So this is 90 pounds-ish of foam. I got 180 pounds of foam. It says it goes to 600 board feet. A board foot is one inch by one foot by one foot. The cabin itself is eight by 12. So let's say it's a 10 by 10, just to make it easy. So 100 board foot. So if I was doing just one inch on the floor, I should be able to do six inches total just on the floor with one of these kits. So in your head, you're trying to imagine a wall, a wall, a wall, and an attic space, which is not an attic space, it's a loft space. Will I be able to get two inches in the whole thing? I don't know. There's a lot of glass here. There's a fair bit of glass on either end, but that's, we'll see how far we get.
Day two of spray foaming and you'll notice there's a lot of blue rigid foam out here and there's a good reason for that. I didn't have nearly enough spray foam to do what I wanted to do. Let's go take a look. Uh, so first of all, you'll notice things like little blocks. I just put them on the wall because they were scraps. But it turns out uh, I should have been doing the whole full length just because there was no way I was going to get far enough with the foam. At the top, you'll notice in the corner, it's not even one inch uh, there. There is like three or four inches, but that's got rigid foam in behind it. So does that. That's actually a two layers of rigid foam. So I really only have about an inch of foam. I have to do the sides again. You can see there's some gapping there. Uh, and then I have to fill in these cavities more. The tanks that I used, the 600 kit, cost $800 per kit. $800. And keep in mind, I put rigid foam in first, and this is how far I got. Those are 2x8s. You can actually see the blue foam there uh, at the very top. When you take into account the corners uh, that I had to fill in the gaps, uh, so just below the foam, that took up a lot of foam as well, obviously. Um, so just below the blue foam, you can see the spray foam. Uh, that took up a lot. So there's really no way for me to calculate how close to 600 board feet this kit was. Yeah, there's a lot of gaps I have to fill. Just so many gaps underneath. Um, you can see it's not even one inch in these pockets. So I'm gonna have to fill everything with the rigid foam and then seal it with the spray foam. Couple of mistakes, uh, more mistakes. So this board, you can see the blue board got pushed out. I let the foam kind of eke in behind instead of holding it tight. Each board I have to hold tight or it will sneak out like that. Now, probably a quarter inch that I have to shave off, 
which is no big deal. Uh, some of the spaces like here, I, I should have been going a little slower. I tried to go as slow as possible, but the nozzle isn't, isn't the best nozzle for dispensing. It's pretty good. I, I mean, I'm not complaining, uh, but you do have to get used to using it. That one up there, I'm gonna move this. That foam piece up there moved a lot. That one did too. Man, I didn't see that last night. So there's three foam pieces that came out. The rest are all fine. So once the walls are shaved down, there's not a whole lot that I need to take off actually, just a little bit on the joists on either side. Uh, the thing you're looking for is you wanna get adhesion on both sides of the wall. So there's a couple of spots where you can just start to see a little bit of a crack. It's not a big deal, but if the foam had pulled away from the wood, if it had been too cold or something like that, then I'd need to redo it, <clears throat> get in those cracks. But this stuck really well because I started on the outside, did a picture frame and made sure that it was glued, lots of product glued in there. So, so far, uh, not, not too bad. I have to get another small kit to finish this wall in the bottom. I'm not sure how far the small kit will go. You'll notice in certain spots like over here, it just exploded. It's such a strange product. Uh, I would swear, sometimes I would put in, and I'm, I'm really cautious, at, I'm pretty sure I'm putting in the same amount of product, but I'll put it in over here and it'll explode. But over on this wall, as an example, right here, I would spray and spray and spray and it would just never fully come out. It was such a strange situation. Do you mind if I rant a little bit? I just want to rant a little bit as I set up for the final, hopefully the final, stage of spray foaming. This is my second suit. These suits are cheap. Amazon, wherever, they're cheap to buy. Everything I wear is disposable because I'm going to get foam on it. Even the flip-flops are disposable. So here's the deal. I've been through two of the A and two of the B. Each of these is rated for 600 board feet, which is one inch by one 12 inch by 12 inch, so one foot, one foot. In a theoretical best case scenario, you're supposed to get 600. Well, and I knew this going in, but in the back of my mind, I think what happened is I figured, well, if I'm spending over $850 per kit, per $600, which is way over, the quoted price, uh, guys around here come in and do closed cell spray foam for uh, $1 per board foot. $1 per board foot. They include the labor, they tape the windows, they're spending the money on the masks, etc., etc. $1. So at over $850 for $600, even in an ideal world, you know you're spending more than you should. But in the back of my head, I'm thinking, well, that much money, it must be a good product, right? Uh, yeah, it's a good product, but you are way overpaying for my purpose. My purpose, which was filling the cavities of this cabin, I made a big mistake and I should not have done that. What I should have done is I should have waited patiently for the first spray foam guy who was available to come and do this. Problem number one, uh, when we had the last family cottage spray foamed, it took weeks. They're just so busy. They're so busy. It took weeks for him to show up. He did. He was great. He brought a truck. Truck had the heater inside, the generator, uh, the fluid coming out of these big uh, barrels, super hot. You, just like you see in the YouTube videos where they do one spray and it just explodes. That's the kind of product. So it's faster for them. It's easier for them. This product, as you've seen me do, very, very slow. Uh, takes a lot. It's a long process. And of course, it doesn't expand anything like their heated trucks can do. The rant part is, I know I made a mistake, kind of. I'm not sure that I could have waited as long as I needed to. And I'm not sure that I could find someone to do a job this small. I don't know. I didn't really try. But the rant part is, the more research I did, no one's getting even close to 600. Or in today's case, no one's getting even close to 200. And you see in the comments, if you go to any big box store, you look at the comments on these, everyone's trying to make sure the temperatures are perfect. And it's funny because you'll see some comments from the company responding to the effect of, while well, room temperature may have been nice, maybe it was on a tile floor, so the tile floor kept it cold. They're always finding excuses. And the people respond, as in my case, 
I know the product was well above the minimum. Very, if it wasn't an ideal temperature, I don't know what else I could possibly do except to live beside a volcano to make this product work anymore. So that's the rant part. Why are you advertising this at 600 or 200? You're not going to get it, folks. That's okay. If, you, if, you're, if you're all right with that, then use the product. Because as far as I can tell, the product itself works really well. It's mixed well. It dried well. I have no problems with the actual product. But the cost to cubic foot, board foot, I'm not okay with that at all. And again, I knew that. So I, I really don't feel like I should be ranting, except that everybody I see in the comments section is suffering from that same kind of disillusionment. What happened? Great product, but nowhere near what we needed. Bead applied sealant. Sealant for airtight seal. I was confused when I got the 600 kit. Both of them came with just the standard bullet uh, nozzles, not the fan nozzle where you get the wide spray. And I know when I used it last, they had that. So I thought that was a little odd. And I thought the bead applied sealant phrasing was kind of odd. What does that mean? I looked into it, and again, uh, I'm pretty sure I don't know what I'm talking about, but I, I might know enough to say something about it, so let me try. I think the bead applied sealant is just what it sounds like. They're not expecting you to fill cavities. They're only expecting you to do the small crevices in the edges, just like it sounds like doing the bead around joists. I thought that was odd too, until I heard that, in fact, the code in Canada, if you have a two canister system, which these are, you're not allowed to be spraying full cavities. Why? I have no idea. Is that still true? I don't know. But that would explain, if it is still true, why they changed out the nozzles, why they put the phrasing on the front, and maybe that even explains why the footage isn't nearly what we think it should be because maybe doing a bead sealant gives you more footage somehow? I, I don't know. I really don't know. Wait, I'm not done the rant. Let me just rant a little more. While doing research, before I even started, because I always like to do research anyway, uh, I noticed a lot of people were doing spray foam with these. Or, break into my container here, a lot of them were just using these regular dust masks. The problem with that, there's a few problems with that. This is a P100. I don't even know what that would be. That's not even an N95. In the age of COVID, we're all more familiar with how masks work. Uh, this will filter out stuff, uh, matter, physical matter. Physical matter seems uh, a little bit off uh, the mark. It will fil filter out everything except organic vapor or uh, gases. I was filling up the generator the other day and I was wearing this and I could smell the gas and I thought, well, that's weird. Maybe my mask is broken. And then I realized that I had swapped out the organic vapor, which stops gases, hopefully, um, for this per particulate filter in this context, so I should sp smell it. But when I put these on, I shouldn't smell anything at all uh, because this ugh, is supposed to stop uh, vapors. I don't know if you can hear me, but the other mistake I may have made is with the first kit, I left this out in the sun, and this being red would have heated up a lot faster than this. You want both the same temperature. I realized it quickly that I was making a mistake, so I was able to bring it in, put it in the shade. Uh, but don't put these in the sun. They'll, eat, they'll heat up unevenly. I wouldn't even believe this is the same company this stuff's working so differently.
All right, if you thought I was ranting before, I'm just outright pissed right now. And why? Because that kit worked. The 200 kit filled every bay. And I was looking for places to put the foam after. Look at that, right out the two by fours. It kept going and going. I'm gonna say this and people will doubt it, but there are only two differences between the two 600 packs and the one 200 pack. Obviously this is the same company, the same product, it's different cans. The first is that it was two or three degrees cooler today at the high point than before. At most, two degrees, two or three degrees at most. The humidity is the same. Even the wind, there's no wind right now. But the second thing that I didn't realize was that the 600 pack expired in about two months. This one expired in about a year. Old foam doesn't friggin' work. I wasted hundreds of dollars expecting to get 600 more feet out of each one, not getting it, but then getting at least, I'm sure now again, I, I, it's too hard to calculate. There's no way for me to know, but I am confident this was at least 200 board feet which to me means when you buy the foam, it's gotta be the right date. Tons and tons of time left. Don't get something, oh, that just, oh, really? If, if you're getting such low yield, it should be on sale or they shouldn't even be selling it. All right, so I'm conflicted. I love this stuff again. It's the bee's knees. I'd probably do it again, uh, but I would only use new foam. There's no way I would use something that's within a few months of expiry. Not expired. Months away from expiring, definitely a well, long time, long, long time away from expiring. I went by your house, what a big mistake. But for a while I thought that I wouldn't break. I need something else to clear my head. Stop rolling the dice and just compromise It's the chance of your life So this is great uh, in the sense that I can go straight down, it carves out most of it, a little bit in there that might hold you up a little bit in the foam, but it's great. You get the edges really well. Here are the drawbacks first, and the most important is it turns everything into an aerosol, almost. Uh, I was wearing a mask, no big deal, it gets on you, no big deal, but some of that stuff floated into my eyes and did not feel good. Uh, and I don't, it's short of wearing goggles, which I don't have, I'm not sure how to avoid it. Plus, this chews up the batteries pretty quick, and I'm off grid, so that's slightly problematic if I want to do a whole cabin. Uh, also, it takes a little while. It's just a small rotary bit. Uh, the saw, on the other hand, a small saw like this is great for corners. I can get in if it's really tight. But just what I purchased this, it was 20 bucks or something. And I can get across two joists, which are a foot apart, and it's pretty, pretty flexible. So I can get up really close and not hit my hand. That's bad. 